Right, hello guys, and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I am excited to bring you a 99 and 12. That's right, we almost dropped the 100, okay? In standard multiplayer, crazy, crazy gameplay, but a 99 and 12 nuclear gameplay with my Krig 6 best class up. That's right, doing a Krig 6 best class up because I have changed it slightly from the last time I used it, and not only that, We've had a lot of changes happen recently in Black Ops Cold War, you know? We've had attachment changes, assault rifles across the board being changed, assault rifle attachments being changed across the board, and there's a lot of things going on, you know? People are trying to work out what's the best AR, what's the best SMG, what's the best sniper, shotgun, all that good stuff. And I want to put my little thoughts, you know, for, well, today's video, I want to talk about mainly, I want to talk about the map, and I do want to talk about this Krieg 6 best class setup. And I want to talk about the Krieg itself and why I think, in my personal opinion, it is the best assault rifle in the game. Some of you might disagree with that, but personally, and from my point of view, I like this assault rifle. I think this is the best assault rifle in the game. It may not have the most damage, but it is by far and away the most accurate assault rifle in the game. And it's just reminiscent, if you've ever played Black Ops 4, a double grip ICR. There is there is no better comparison to this gun than calling it a double grip ICR. It is just unbelievable with these attachments, which I will be having a, uh, at the end of the video. So at the end of the video, instead of at the beginning, I've decided I'm going to put them at the end of the video because I feel like some people do just kind of click on and just kind of click off once they've seen the class up. And obviously, I do put a lot of time and effort into these videos, so I would like people to maybe stick around and hopefully watch you know, to find out the class up. So don't think I'm too much of a scumbag for that. You know, I'm hoping you guys like appreciate, you know, you know, understand why I'm doing that because I do obviously, you know, again, I, there's no point putting time into a video and then having someone watch it for like one minute so they can get the class up. I kind of want people to you know, one, check out the gameplay. Like these gameplays I'm getting are pretty insane at the moment. I'm putting up some numbers on the board. And again, a 99 and 12, almost dropping the 100. Technically, you could call it a choke if you want, you know, not dropping 100 is technically a choke of the 100. But I dropped a nuke, you know, that was all I was satisfied with, dropping the nuke. And then once I realized I was actually close to the 100, I tried super duper hard to get it, but I couldn't quite pull it off. But let's get into it. Let's talk about first the map, okay? Yamantu. Now, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Again, I may have butchered that. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below, you know, kind of like phrase out for me. How do you pronounce this map? Do you call it Yamantu? Is there another way of pronouncing this? I'm not sure. But thoughts and opinions on this map. So initially, when I first played this map, it was, I would say it was more the games I was getting into. I was having a, a rough time with team balancing, I'd say. By the way, as well, before anyone questions it, this gameplay is not reverse boosted. Okay, for anyone new to the channel, anyone who, you know, has been on the channel for a while understands and should know by now that I don't reverse boost, I don't cheat, I don't do anything like that. And I will leave it in the comment section below uh, my card tracker so you guys can see I don't reverse boost, I don't cheat, I don't do anything crazy to get these gameplays. Are these people absolutely insane? No, probably not. It's probably just one of those lucky games I got into because eventually you are going to get into one of those lobbies that's a bit easier than the others. But I wouldn't say the people in this lobby are complete bot like some maybe, but not all of them. So yeah, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the map like I was saying. So the map itself, it's got a lot of sight lines. It's definitely like the reason I was using the Krieg 6 on this map is because I do believe this map ta is tailor made towards assault rifles, sniper rifles. LMGs, anything long range, especially TAC rifles. TAC rifles are extremely strong. That's one thing I'll say the TAC rifle, does, uh, sorry, the Krieg 6 doesn't beat, is TAC rifles are extremely strong on this map. M16, Org, DMR, you name it. They're going to dominate on this map, you know. Unless you get into the indoors area. The indoor area is a bit different. You know, you've got like a couple of places you can play with an SMG. But other than that, this is a strictly long range, mid range map, in my opinion. Lots of head glitches if you can get to them. Sometimes if you know if you can't get to the head glitch you need to get to, you are a bit exposed, you're a bit in the open. Uh, and it's a very it's it's not a very just straight map. There's there's inclines everywhere, there's bits of snow that you can use as cover in like weird positions. As you can see, there's jump ups as well to get into the opposite end. So obviously you've got the opposite doorway that I'm looking at now, and then you've got the side I'm on, you've got jump ups for both of them spots. Not easy jump ups, it seems like you have to have a bit of a run up for some reason. You can't just straight jump up to them. So if you didn't know you could do that. You have that zip line there for a good little flank, which I, I would say is a good flank, but it is super easy to hear people if you've got a good headset, or even if you've, if you, as long as you've got your sound on, on your monitor or TV or whatever it is, you will probably hear someone coming up with that zip line. And the amount of times I've died trying to like get up there and think I'm gonna get a nice little flank on someone, but there's normally someone sitting in that little bit because people like to camp that alleyway a little, that well, that hallway a bit with uh, an SMG, like an LC10, something like that. That's where people with SMGs seem to be sitting. But LMGs, ARs, you're talking on the other side of the map. So on the right-hand side of where I am now. It, uh, yeah, I'd say it's an LMG sniper, sorry for base map. Overall, personal opinion the map, 
I would say it's an okay map. I, I can't say that I like it yet. I don't know. It's just weird at the moment. It seems to be it seems to be very reliant on like what team you get. And I know that you could say that about any other map, but like even with bad teams on raid, for instance, I enjoy raid. Raid is a massively enjoyable map. That's kind of where I'm putting the comparisons out. So maybe that makes this a good map. At the end of the day, I am comparing it to what I think is the best map in the game. Obviously, we are waiting on standoff as well, which I am massively excited for. Cannot wait for that map to come to the game. But this map for now was not a bad addition to the game. I'll say that. It was definitely not a bad addition. It's a good solid map. It's definitely better than some base maps we got in this game. You know, some maps just do not play very well. I think Moscow is one of them. Mo Moscow is a good map in S&D. And if you play league play, I'd say. But outside of that, you're talking public matches, playing hardpoint in public matches and stuff. It's just very slow and tedious, especially TDM. Maybe that's just TDM itself. I don't know. I haven't had a lot of, you know, fun experiences playing TDM this year. It just seems very slow and campy. But yeah, so this map does fit well with this game. I think it's, it's a very good map. If this map launched, you know, at launch, it'd be one of those maps you, you, uh, you'd play. You, you'd be okay with playing it. But would you be like, the, you know, is this an absolutely legendary map? No, this is definitely not a card legendary map. But it's a good map definitely a top top five map in this game i think that's a solid place to put top five top eight map let me know in the comment section below what you think of the map have you had fun experiences have you even played this map yet i haven't actually played the diesel map yet because it was 3v3 i believe it's now in a 6v6 playlist so might give that a shot give that and see what that's all about but yeah this map for now solid map in my opinion i'll give it an 8 out of 10 8 out of 10 7 out of 10 i think that's a solid place to put it let me know in the comment section below what you rate this map and your Personal favorites on the map. What's your go-to gun for this map as well? What how do you what do you think is the playstyle for this map? Again, like I said, personally, I think long range is what this map is built for. But yeah. Next up, let's talk about. Even though I haven't shown you my Craig Six class serb yet, and again, that is at the end of the video for you guys to see and note down and check out and use. I will be talking about the Craig Six and what I am using. So first of all, let's start with the optic. As you can see, it's quite quite obvious. I am using the Microflex LED. Now, I would say you could definitely switch between the two, which is, in my personal preference or personal opinion, you should use either the Millstop Reflex or the Microflex LED. Either one works very well, but I'd say with the Millstop, you're looking at long range and you're going to be sacrificing that short range engagement, whereas the Microflex LED gives you that slight chance at short range. But again, the Krig 6 in the short range, not a very good weapon, you know, against the 74U, against the LC10. Any gun that dominates SMG, you know, the short ranges, you're not going to be winning, okay? The Krig 6 is good, but you've got to go a couple of headshots in there. And you can't rely on headshots all the time, especially with things like lag, uh, you know, how would I put it? There's connections, bullet velocity. There's a lot of things that go into like trying to land a headshot. If you're a good player who can land a couple of headshots, then by far and away, you know, I, I, I would recommend the Microflex LED. That's why I'm using it. I, I like to try and win those short range engagements because you are going to get into them. You can't always avoid them. But yeah, so Microflex LED, in my personal preference, or my personal opinion, is the best site for this gun. Next up, we go to Barrel. By the way, I'm also using only five attachments on this, so I'll talk about the perks as well in a second. But Barrel Ranger, you're probably thinking, why Ranger? Why not go for the CMV mil spec with the extra damage? To be honest, the CMV mil spec has basically uh, too much of a downside and just a big negative as to what the gun's going to do. This gun is built for range. The CMV mil spec, as much as you get plus 6% damage and people think that's amazing, you know, it's, it's like having the, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but the damage barrels for other weapons, you're probably thinking extra damage, that sounds great. But when you lose 40% effective damage range on a gun that's built for range, you're basically nerfing your own weapon just to win short range engagements. So that's not built for short range engagements. So I personally went with the 19.7 Ranger. You get 100% bullet velocity, taking this thing all the way up to 1,250. That's massive, okay? You'll basically be going to have instant hit break, okay? It's going to be like hit scan. You are not going to be... There is no way you're going to have to counter like bullets at, at you know, longer ranges. Absolutely no chance at all. Your bullets will be hitting instantly and it just eliminates any chance of like lag and that coming into play and possibly you know messing around with your bullet velocity and making it so you're not hitting shots so yeah 19.7 ranger massively worth it yes you lose 20 percent aim walking with speed but we do have an attachment to fix that anyway so next up let's move to the underbarrel field agent group i thought why not let's make this gun what it's good at let's make this gun absolute the dominant at those mid to long ranges and the best way to do that is to make the gun as accurate as possible no bouncing around no recoil no nothing and the field agent grip is the best for that plus five percent vertical recoil control and plus 20 percent horizontal recoil control. and the only thing you lose is minus 26 percent shooting move speed which does sound like a lot 
at the end of the day, the shooting move speed isn't like massive, okay? You still don't move that fast, even with three miles per hour more, it is not that fast. So it's a very small sacrifice for a very massive, you know, bonus to this uh, to this weapon's recoil. So definitely put that on. Make sure this gun is winning those medium to long range engagements. Because again, at those medium to long range engagements, those people who are using guns like, I don't know, a stoner for instance and that, which have been nerfed as well to let their recoil and have a lot more recoil, they're going to be they're going to be struggling to control their weapons whilst you on the other hand have got this absolutely accurate beam icr double grip from bo4 basically just shooting across the map at god knows what bullet velocity it's going to be crazy so yeah definitely use the field agent grip definitely going to have that as low recoil as possible next up as i always say it's pretty much the same on every single weapon at the moment handle you got to use the bottom handle airborne elastic wrap again it's the best it's the best aim down sight uh, grip in the game plus 30% aim down sight time plus 90% flinch resistance what could, what goes wrong with that you know and having less flinch resistance more flinch resistance sorry means you're going to be you know you're not going to be flinching all over the place you're not going to have anyone's damage doing stuff to you making your gun go all over the place so yeah definitely go with that yes you have less shooting moves speed and less sprint to fire time again we got an attack to fix that and that's the next attachment which is the stock raider stock sprint to fire time plus 30 percent and aim walking movement speed plus 40 percent massive bonuses to your movement speed exactly what we need and not only that the sprint to fire time so we can possibly win those short range engagements if we need to or if we get caught off guard by someone else on a head glitch we have a chance to possibly get up and strike back but as you guys saw there as well i did get the nuke just a few well, a couple of minutes ago picked up a nuke in this game and here i am trying to trying my hardest to drop the 100 i was trying so hard i called in the heart called in the war machine i think i died with the war machine i just missed that but yeah so those are my attachments for the gun. I've also got dual wielder magnums in the back pocket because they are still quite good. Stim shot, Semtex trophy system, and then my perks are flat jacket, tap mask. Don't want to be getting stunned. Don't want to be getting naded. Scavenger, a gearhead, ninja, and ghost. That is my setup for the Krig Six, and th that is going to be pretty much the end of this gameplay. But an absolutely insane, 99 and 12 nuclear gameplay on the brand new map with my Krig 6 best class up and I will be showing that Krig 6 in the next scene so you know you guys can take note it down and have it there on your screen to see what I am exactly running but yeah I hope you enjoyed today's video if you did leave a comment leave a like subscribe subscribe notifications on I'll catch you guys in the next video bye And hello guys, and to those of you who reached the end of the gameplay, here it is, the Krig 6 best class setup. Like I said in the gameplay, the optic, microflex LED, the barrel being the 19.7 Ranger, the underbarrel being the field agent grip, the handle being the airborne elastic wrap, and then finally the stock being the Raider stock. For the attachments for the pistol, if you guys are interested, muzzle, sound suppressor, barrel, 7.2 task force, body, 5 milliwatt laser sight, magazine 12 round fast mags and then finally dual wield for those close range engagements of course and then finally you got your tactical being the stim shot the lethal being the semtex the field upgrade being the trophy system now obviously wild card perk greed you want to be going with flat jacket tap mask scavenger gearhead and then on top of that finally ghost and ninja and that is my setup the best class setup for the Krig six and i want you guys to enjoy it. i hope you guys do enjoy it and yeah Leave a comment down below what you think of my Krig 6 class up or let me know if you've got a better class up for the Krig 6. Let me know down below and yeah, see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.